computers are everywhere. They use the same computational technology, from your smartphones to the world's most sophisticated computers at NASA. However, as computers become more and more advanced with each year, one begins to wonder, is there a limit to their computational advancement? In fact, a famous American engineer, Gordon Moore, proposed a law which states that every two years, the computational power of such computers will increase by a factor of two by placing more and more transistors on the circuit board. However, there's only so many transistors what can place on a circuit board until it simply becomes too small. Engineers and mathematicians alike have been puzzled by this problem, asking questions like, will we ever make faster performing computers? Or is there a limit to their computational technology? Turns out there is an alternative. An alternative that can perform calculations 160 million times faster than the world's most sophisticated computers. Quantum computing relies on the properties of quantum physics, especially the effect called quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement allows individual electrons to remain entangled. This means that we cannot view their state individually, even when they're separated by long distances. Quantum computers use this effect in order to go from simple ones and zeros bits to a new unit of computation, qubits. Qubits use quantum entanglement to create new and emerging solutions and make computing much faster than before. In fact, a quantum computer is a device so powerful that it can perform the same amount of computation in four minutes that would take a regular computer 10,000 years to accomplish. Quantum computing is based on a framework called quantum theory developed in 1920s by collaborative work of physicists worldwide and expanded on in the years that followed. However, one may wonder, what does quantum computing have to do with real computers, let alone quantum change solutions and climate change? However, it turned out that quantum computing has become one of the most uh, prospective and promising areas of research in the field of modern computing. However, don't throw away your laptops and smartphones just yet. Quantum computing has nothing to do with everyday applications. However, it has the potential to revolutionize the field of predictive analytics. This means that we can create weather patterns, design delivery track routes, and analyze millions and billions of constantly changing variables, all in a matter of seconds. Let's take weather forecasting, for example. When it's a hot day, more people might use air conditioning. It means that more energy should be generated from solar power. A renewable energy system should take all of those constantly changing parameters into account. And this process can be made simple, easy and reliable with quantum computing. When a consumer buys a product, transportation, rather than the product itself, it's the main contributor to the carbon footprint the product leaves behind. Typical companies use supply chains to transport products straight to the consumers. And unfortunately, this process requires a lot of fuel and is detrimental for the environment. Quantum computing can allow us to create effective delivery track routes. This means that we can help businesses manage trade-off, like sourcing grain commodities from farms that are both sustainable and close to the point of consumption. The same thing can be done in material sciences. Quantum computers can simulate materials on the atomic level much faster and more efficiently than a chemistry lab can. This means that we can create new materials with desirable properties and explore the materials that already exist. For example, we can create materials that store energy more efficiently and create solar panels that are much more effective. About solar panels. Solar panels use mirrors and lenses to concentrate light. Silicon wafer is conventionally used as the layer that concentrates lights. Once inside the solar panel, the individual particles of light, photons, collide with electrons 
displacing them and allowing for current to flow. This setup works well, but it can be done better. Conventional solar panels have the efficiency of 5 to 19% of their potential power. However, solar panels based on the principles of quantum technology allow for the so-called quantum dots, nanocyte semiconductors that only allow individual electrons to reside on a single semiconductor. And even though this technology is only in development, it has the potential to boost the efficiency of solar panels up to 65%. Even the world's most efficient power grids are based on the principles of quantum technology. Superconducting wires, as the name suggests, allow for the current to flow with almost no resistance. Compared to conventional copper wires, which are used worldwide in power grids, superconducting wires can allow electricity to flow at 200 times the electrical current. Even despite all of these amazing properties and possibilities, quantum technology still has a long way to go until it becomes widely uh, used. This is due to the fact that it requires extremely low temperatures in order to function properly. So, even though quantum technology is more cost efficient and effective, the cost associated with maintaining its low temperatures disallow them to be used worldwide. For example, superconducting wires require to be cooled to near zero uh, temperatures in order to remain superconductive. Frankly, uh, nowadays, supercomputers look more like a crossbreed between a refrigerator unit and a nuclear bomb rather than the box-like computers we're more used to today. Supercomputers have attracted attention of scientists and mathematicians alike, and for a good reason has the potential to solve one of the world's most complex and challenging problems. From superconducting wires and solar panels to weather patterns and quantum simulations, it can change the way we approach climate change solutions. But besides these practical applications, quantum computers inspire scientists to think differently about the world around us. So how do we make sure that the humanity uh, benefits from quantum change? Of course, we need to invest in this technology and support researchers conducting research in those areas. However, it's not all about investment. It's crucial that we make sure that uh, our society uses quantum technology, both effectively and ethically, considering its wider impact on individual societies and users. Only through a conscious and responsible approach can we make sure that quantum technology benefits humanity in the long run. Thank you.